Hi beautifuls, welcome back. We are here to dive into 2021 and the astrology in all your must knows. Now, if you haven't sub sub, if you do want to follow me and you feel this content relates to you individually, please write in the comment section how it does. I love to hear your feedback. Now, we're moving away from a very interesting 2020 and into a very unique 2021 that for a lot of us collectively hasn't happened on this planet before and we are entering the air signs. We had both Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius. So it is very much that Aquarian age themes coming through. So we're gonna tune into this week up until the 8th, what will be coming up for you, what the planets are doing and how they're going to affect you. Now this month we do have Uranus and Taurus going stationary direct on the 1st. We also have Mars transiting out of Aries and into Taurus, and that's occurring on the 7th. Venus is also transiting into Capricorn on the 8th, and we also, towards the end of the month, will have a Mercury retrograde. We also this year have three squaring aspects Saturn is making, which are quite major aspects of this year's astrology. The dates that that's occurring is going to be February the 17th, June the 14th and December the 24th. Now we'll get deep into your astrology and tell you how this week up into the 8th is going to affect your zodiac sign. Hello beautiful Sagittarius. We are here to do your weekly forecast for January between the 1st and the 8th, 2021. Now we did last month have the eclipse in your first house placement and where you stand moving through 2021 will be very different and you are going to be having another eclipse in Sagittarius but at the moment you do have a transformation stage over the next six months. So there still may be some very um, personal transformations that you're working from uh, and a lot of that especially because we did have the full moon in Cancer at the end of December did connect in with your eighth house placement and that energy will resonate until the next moon phase but the moon will be transiting stage by stage and we will discuss that inside this video so for the eighth house placement it was potentially your finances um, if you're in a partnership this shared aspect what was there deeper intimacy um, purging those things of maybe even people from the past because eighth house placement can be legacies wills um, people that are passed over but it can also be your direct physical foundation and deepening that connection and allowing new energy to come in okay now both Saturn and Jupiter are going to be in your third house placement and that's for much of 2021 mid-year we are having Jupiter retrograding into Pisces where we will discuss that energy later as it retrogrades what's coming up for you and whatnot now with the third house placement your communication um, your daily routine it can also be vehicles technology lots of those situations can be changing and it can be very communication orientated over the next year for you individually third house can also link to siblings so potentially if there's things that you're needing to do um, talking through things seeing other people's perspectives you may find that that inside yourself is really transforming. Now on the first day of the month and on the second, we have the moon transiting Leo. And for you personally, this connects into your sixth house placement. Sixth house placement, mm, let's, let's be open-minded with this. It can be your employment, your routine, your health, your diet, what you do when you're tense to cope with stress levels. Are you achieving targets, getting things done? It's the house of hidden enemies and sometimes that can be other people where we directly give our power away, where we're not creating healthy boundaries. Other times it can be within ourselves where we haven't you know, achieved certain things. So with that, emotions relating to that can be coming up, but really checking in, moving into 2021, uh, with your self intact and your health intact. So, you know, tuning into what you would need to do to transform those energies, emotions can be heightened. So stress levels potentially at the end of last month might have been quite high for you. Now on the first, we have Mercury in Capricorn, sextiling Neptune in Pisces. And both your physical net worth as well as your home can be changing. Now, this may be your ability to do such. It may also be uh, your income going up where you can actually deal with certain things. 
however it's going to play out for you both home and your self-esteem having the courage even if you are stressed you know trying to find the balance in that domain and if it does mean changing up your daily routine you know really striving for your hopes and dreams or trying to get a home that is your hope and dream be it you're renovating it moving or transforming it in some shape or form providing you can keep grounded uh, you, your strength is there but sometimes you might be putting a poker face on so you know actually navigating your day-to-day -day routine making sure you've got all your ducks in a row so that you can actually achieve those targets but sex tolls are beneficial so you may get news um, and taking the responsibility to make sure all the paperwork's done and getting everything done in a timely fashion now because the sun's in Capricorn you will find that you have the energy to take accountability you also might be showing your true colors really when it does come to you know what's your worth in this tactile world how people directly see you and I really feel if you had been second guessing yourself this eclipse is really helping you shine through and turn over that new leaf leaving the past behind and moving forward to have that transformative situation and that can be within your career and other domains too now on the third and the fourth we have the moon transiting Virgo now Virgo is really great for analytics it, it's great for tidying up cleaning shop getting organized maybe having a very keen eye for perfectionism and details and emotionally if you are dealing with something that can be um, crucial it can be crucial to a degree that we are able to accept something for what it is also if you're needing to ask help or you're needing to train people um, that placement can make it very difficult it's almost like it's all on you energy so if you do feel the world's on you and you have been working very hard and you're not working between the second and the third it's a very good time to get organized but also to de-stress and decompress now on the fourth although we do have the moon still transiting Virgo relating to your career we also have Mercury in Capricorn in conjunction to Pluto in Capricorn so if you've been trying to complete something if you, something may come out of left field either via communication or suddenly being able to complete it and it can also be like a missing piece of a puzzle really having that epiphany moment and bringing it full circle where you can complete that task and I really feel the first week it does seem like things to do with that I do feel your daily routine may have a lot of responsibilities on it so keeping grounded um, only taking responsibility where it's yours um, and if it's if it's becoming very challenging really you know with that six house placement making sure you're sharing the load making sure that everyone say if you're a manager for instance making sure people are doing what they're needing to do and you not having to do everything making sure that staff etc are trained making sure you're in the loop if it's a work related dynamic such if it's a family and love related dynamic again that exchanging of energy but regardless you'll have both the intellect the energy um, but just you know not moving to burnout mode which would be deeply important now you've also got between the fifth and the sixth the moon is transiting Libra and this can be a very social time for you so again if you're trying to do a lot of things and you are networking and you are socializing to move those hopes and dreams I do feel that again being cautious with biting off more than you can chew it is a great time to launch things but more if you've directly already started um, that ball rolling and especially last month we had a two-week cycle even though we were moving towards both Christmas and New Year's it was a good time to actually get the ball rolling connected to career connected to hopes and dreams and aspirations so that you had everything ready for launch come January and it seems really ironic that we're saying this because generally moving into 2021 or a new year for that matter we tend to have uh, you tend to feel like the year has started in February I'm really feeling quality systems cleaning up shop getting grounded and being prepared is important because we do have a lot of busy activations occurring this year it will be a more flowing conducive energy but there can be sudden changes 
um, at times when we do have Uranus and Taurus squaring um, on three intervals. So sudden aspects really linking to that can create sudden fortune, providing you are doing everything on your side of the fence, keeping accountable, keeping your health in check, transforming it, you will be able to attain things. But it is the house of hidden enemies, so be it it's another person or yourself, that's really the only thing that can shift and transform. If somebody's doing wrong by you, you can see a sudden change in that. If you feel that you're extending yourself above and beyond, um, making sure you're getting what your net worth is, and this can be maybe even if you're assessing your contract of where you stand or directly connected to marriages, contracts, partnerships, because we also have Neptune in Pisces squaring the nodes in Gemini, which does link to your marriages, contracts, partnerships. So with home and stress levels, trying to balance all of these things, the sixth can be a tension point, but I do feel emotionally your intent, especially with Libra being there, you're trying to bring everything together. So both on the fifth and the sixth, trying to pull those things together can be a bit testing. But nevertheless, I do feel, um, you know, pulling in your tribe, especially because Gemini is quite local energy, and, you know, pulling your team and helping everyone work together as a team will work best. Now, over the next two and a half years, because we have the nodes in Gemini and Sagittarius, plus we had the eclipses last month in those areas, you will find that these areas in your life will take a deep transformation. Also linking to Taurus, we are going to be having Uranus and Taurus transiting Black Moon and Lilith and Taurus. And, you know, with those areas, the dates, bear in mind when I turn around, February the 17th, June the 14th, and December the 24th. And you can expect with Uranus and Taurus this month going station redirect, you know, it can be where it does happen quite suddenly. Some of this may have even played out last month relating to Taurus. This can be to do with your health, your work, um, your daily routine, trying to pull everything together, your stress levels, um, but also working very hard for what you have, however it be, pushing that, you know, really pushing that penny, trying to build that dream for yourself. It will pay off. Now, if you feel you are doing everything, as I mentioned, you will find that things will start flowing. Now, Mars has been in Aries for a while, and we did have Aries and Chiron retrograde also last month, as well as with the Mars retrograde we had, we were still recouping at the end of 2020. Moving into 2021, much can be the same, sort of recouping, moving forward, gaining more momentum. Now, we did have it in your fifth house. So any creative projects that you were trying to achieve were really working hard so that you could have a social life, get the nice things in life. Maybe there was complications there um, during probably the last three months of 2020. Now you're gonna find the pressure is going to come off, but this week it could be quite tense because as Mars transits away from Aries and into Taurus, it can be this pressure point. So, you know, trying to do all you can, as long as you're keeping correct and you're, you, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, you will find you will get there. That was putting a lot of pressure last year on your connections, on, on your romance, on your children, um, however it relates, even your co-created projects, bringing them forward, you're going to feel that the pressure is coming off that area now. And although we do have Aries and Chiron there for about seven years, it's more a theme where we'll be able to assess those areas that we have blockages in. It can be our childhood, um, having faith in ourselves that we can launch these creative endeavors. Really, you guys, Sagittarius, have that there. Bearing in mind you have this in the bag, you have to have faith in yourself. So the fatigue more so can really affect that. And you do tend to find when you're triggered and you're unrested, because you're Jupiter energy and it's go, 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 really having to find that, you know, following things completely through, maybe completing things, especially with the seventh house placement will benefit you the most. And I do feel you'll learn a great deal from connecting in with like-minded individuals and your connections will teach you a lot over the next two and a half years. So on the seventh, we have Mars transiting into Taurus. Pay attention to your emotions, anything you're wanting, really burning that midnight oil, trying to make things happen, but you will find you'll have more energy to pour into that location. 
So if you're trying to get your health in order, you're trying to get your stress levels down, you're trying to level up and do everything you can inside of anything that you're working on, as long as you're creating healthy boundaries with yourself and others, you will find you will go the distance. But there also can be sudden changes between now and the 15th. Now on the 8th, we're having the moon transiting Scorpio and this links to your 12th house placement. And again, you can be really tuning into uh, the fact that you want things or that you've got hunches and you have feelings to do with things and even your psychology and wanting to have that deeper connection with situations, um, wanting to maybe even feel sane that you can cope with all of these things. It is a house of... Um, it, 12th house is very unique. It can play it in a multitude of ways. So your emotions will be linking to the 12th, but spiritually you can be seeing things very differently. Now with the 12th house, it can be your subconscious mind, hidden resources, secrets, enemies, responsibilities, um, you know, your social responsibilities, the things that you need to do. Can you achieve them? If a betrayal has occurred, um, if you have betrayed another person, but a lot of um, psychology surrounding these things. So emotions can be heightened, but if you're grounded and you're coping, you'll be fine. Now, Venus enters Capricorn on the 8th, and that connects in with your marriages, contracts, partnerships, as well as your net worth value. So self-esteem, um, you can be looking at the fact inside of these situations, maybe where crosswires occurred. You can also, you will be able to take the bull by the horns and handle things. You may also be looking at responsibilities inside of marriages, contracts, partnerships also. Now, with Mercury entering Aquarius, uh, although we don't have Mercury retrograde, it sort of goes shadow by mid-month. You do have the third house placement with both Saturn and Jupiter there. So Mercury entering that area, you can be tuning into maybe conversations that are being had, your daily routine, the way you communicate, IT, vehicles, things to that degree. So if you are wanting to um, have certain areas linking to that transform and you do want to have conversations, I think you'll really think of the bigger picture. And if you are mentoring people, you will speak um, like-minded energy. Uh, you're becoming part of a team. You know, there's no I in team, however it relates. And that's really the energy of, you know, the Aquarian themes coming through for 2021. Now, the sun is going to be in Capricorn, sextiling Neptune and Pisces. So again, if you needed finances relating to home, moves, buying, etc., that can be aspected very beautifully. And you're going to have the ability to do what you need to do. Be it you're moving home, be it you're taking the ball by the horns, I do feel it's gorgeous. Now, we've also got Mercury in Aquarius squaring Mars in Taurus. So your thoughts, and again, putting your energy into things, it might be running you ragged and, and maybe even the communication style. Uh, what you're thinking and what you're trying to create versus um, maybe the energy to make that happen might not be there. Um, and even respect amongst pairs and things to that degree. It could be quite tense on the eighth, but just have patience with it, it will shift. Now, on the same day, we're having Venus and Capricorn trining Mars in Taurus. So working on um, your relationships, but also creating healthy boundaries. And I do feel as well, if you are wanting to, you know, turn over a new leaf inside a connection and talk about these things, they can be highlighted during this day. And now let's get into your must knows. Must knows for Sagittarius. Now, number one, I would be highly surprised if you didn't have to think on your feet. And that might have been playing out prior to the eclipse in Sagittarius. A lot about you over this week is really culminating very much linking to your self-esteem, your communication style, and communication I see is the key. Also talking about how you feel to do with situations, keeping grounded, making sure that you have time out from stress. Now, stress can be also feeling like you're not getting on top of things. Is it ever going to end? Um, sometimes us feeling energetically due to those stress levels, making a, a molehill, making a mountain into a molehill or vice versa. You get my gist? I do feel with you having enough oomph to get things done, although you're related to Jupiter in energy, 
your communication with these subject matters is going to be crucial and it's a bit like a manifestation energy i'm seeing coming through with you you know what we say is is what actually occurs it's actually putting our money where our mouth is but for you individually i do feel sacral chakra now that's because you're needing to have a lot of energy to really launch these things and again when it does come to um, nervous system energy I wouldn't be surprised if there's gut related dynamics and that can be um, eating not wanting to eat tension uh, and again keeping grounded but noticing how you're eating sitting upright and actually eating slowly um, when you're communicating doing breathing exercises uh, and also feeling that you are not taking it personal when you're delivering messages, you know, speaking from the heart. But I do feel this first week can be a bit of a tension point, but being gentle to yourself. Now, I do see if there has been any emotional related dynamics of consuming, tension, energy, um, just getting the um, sacral chakra and solar plexus kind of in alignment and definitely with the throat chakra coming through you're going to find um, sitting and eating uh, and, and the breathing exercises is, is going to help that calm that frequency down and definitely having that space this month that if you do need to sit back and have some quiet time away from white noise uh, sometimes yes to actually tune into what needs to be completed or how you feel but simply allocating a small space of time for no white noise. And it's so your body energetically through Uranus and Taurus going direct, it can adjust to the vibration. So you may find your very empath energy this month where you feel people's vibrations and it feels gross and you're feeling guilt connected to it. That's why I said very much solar plexus sacral chakra balance. As for paperwork and things to that degree, completing anything for relating to home, get your organization going. Take time for self. Home can be transforming and changing or you could be moving for some of you. Try not to feel guilty, especially if you've got work related dynamics. If you are assessing things and you feel they need to change. Communication is going to be the absolute key and it's really going to benefit you if you can communicate effectively through this adversity and these problems. And your relationship sector is set to glow, especially in 2021. Um, it's more conducive energy. So although we have had pretty heavy energies the last few years, because we are moving into the um, kind of domain of air energies, communication thought processes uh, you know, joining with people, feeling more like-minded can be um, sort of a thing coming through. Also, when it's um, get rich quick schemes, be very careful. Although it's not Mercury retrograde, the accountable energy is there for Mercury. Re really reading that fine print um, and, and seeing exactly what you're getting into. Now, as to updates and things to that degree, financially speaking, you may be spending money on this can be on fuel, on um, IT, technology, um, cars, etc., or a physical house, something to do with your home and, and renovating and changing. So however it lands for you, food for thought. Last but not least, pay attention to the Capricorn themes because on the 13th next week, we are having a new moon in Capricorn, which will be a turnover of the leaf connected to the second house of self-esteem, professional resources, and more. Okay, beautiful Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment box. I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you do feel this video resonates and you find it useful, please subscribe. And those of you who have, thank you. Welcome back, guys. Happy New Year. Let's get into this energy. Week by week, I'll do forecasts. We'll also have your romance house, twin flame path, super chat, moon energies, eclipse energy, chakra reports, and more. If you do need a booking, the link is directly below. As well as I trust you have a very safe week, Sagittarius. I'll see you on the other side.